Hello, hola, welcome everyone. So this episode of the of the Rock of Log is gonna be a little different, and I'm gonna use it as a, kind of a, of a journal entry. So I might go into a mono into a monochrome filter soon to give it the seriousness seriousness <laughs> that this requires. And it's because I'm gonna touch on a subject that is sensitive. And it's more due to a, something that I've been wanting to share for a while. And right now the world is in, it's going through a lot of things. There's, there's a lot going on. And one, the, the subject that I'm talking about doesn't have to do directly with what's going on. But it's because the subject that I will touch is very connected to a lot of friends and me. And it has to do with grief. And here it goes. I have no other way. And I've gone through this. I've gone through this script in my head for four weeks, trying to figure out how I'm going to do the introduction. And I don't have a better way than saying, but just starting by saying that I've been griefing since December. My best friend's wife passed away. Very young, tragically, and random. She had a, uh, I struggle to say this word, to say this word a lot properly, a brain aneurysm. And um, it came out of nowhere, took us by surprise, all of us. And it's been, uh, it's been a weird 2020 for a lot of reasons and dealing with that in the back burner is just, and the thing is that back back in November, I decided, cause I had a bit of a, you don't think that you have to go through these things in your thirties, like, uh, like, like depression, anxiety. I used to think that those were things you dealt with when you were, a teenager and a young adult in your in your in your, in your early to mid twenties, and then you learn how, how to deal with it, and you and you keep going. But as life has taught me, that you don't just grow out of it. It actually becomes a little difficult, ter, with time. And this one has hurt because I did refer to her as my best friend's wife but she was my friend too. Someone who I, in life, learned to appreciate and consider a sister. And yeah, a lot of people talk about how you develop families outside of your family circle. And if it hasn't synced in, you will develop friendships that are stronger in bond than blood relatives. Blood connections are important, but there are families that have a blood bond that means and does nothing. And a friendship bond that connects in a spiritual level like it does can do so much more. And she did that. Not just for me, not just for my best friend, for a lot of people. That's why... In our circle of friends, it turned out that it affected a lot of circle of people that knew each other, that knew her. Of course, you know, I would, I was protecting, I would protect or try my closest ones. And uh, my best friend, he, in our circle of friends, has always been the strongest mentally and the smartest. Like, legitimate. He's a brain. And you... In university, he was the smartest one. He, he, you know, he figured out everything. And I couldn't, I could not recall a moment in our 
16 to 17 year friendship that I saw him weak and not weak in the sense of just powerless because something so devastating has just happened and again very out of nowhere and this was a week before Christmas that it happened so for us December was just a really tragic and odd month the following months were even weirder because we see her in everything that we say do share and um she was the one from our group that would always document things i would help her you know i i always tried that myself but she was always a lot faster and snappier in capturing moments um and the thing that i'm pretty sure none of us can wrap our heads around is what was the purpose yeah you can go through the through the religious channels and and find a divine reason blah blue blah blee but as a raised catholic which i which i'm not a big follower of i'm sorry that i have to to say it like this but that's bullshit there's no logical reason for what happened to her there is no logical reason for what is happening for what has happened to him and i feel powerless in trying to help because i feel a sort of responsibility that i have to try and help him i i I don't even bring up the subject or her name much unless he does because if I feel so much anger inside I cannot imagine what he feels what to do with the house that they that he that he bought for them what to do with all the goals that they had together it's it's like a major reset to your lifeline where does he go from here continue working saving money buying things for what and i feel powerless and I feel that I'm in a constant state of grief. And my emotions switch drastically daily. One day I can be happy and doing jokes because it's in my nature. I can't help but try and be who I am. And there are other <laughs> situations going on in my personal life with with family members that it's a long process it's another it's it's a long process in in the sense that i don't have all the energy to focus on this grieving on this grief that we are all going through took me almost 15 years and i'm not gonna say it to get over it but it took me almost 15 years to not cry on the day of the birthday of my cousin, Fernando. He died of cancer. I think I was 20, 20 or 21. He was one year older than me of lymphoma. And it took me almost 15 years to, on that day of his birthday, in November, to wake up and not cry. It was a weird feeling, and this was last year, by the way, that I was able to wake up on that day and be, feel fine, feel peace. And then December hit and dropped this. 
and when I try to think back on on those 72 hours it's it's in, it's almost insane all that happened from a phone call to go to go get this and go back home late then the next day this this and that and that same day we kind of, we had our answer we just we needed an official answer that came on the third day and i remember driving to the hospital and a friend of ours her best friend calls me and just tells me that it's that it's official by so so condition at this time I remember hanging up and I told her okay I'm on the way I'll be there as soon as possible and I remember just screaming inside the car while driving I don't think I've ever let out a shout that loud before I just screamed puñeta but so loud that I could it almost hurt my hearing and trying to drive and crying and tears coming down trying to trying to catch my breath and it's yeah it's been a strange month and the purpose of this video I, i'm not really sure if it's what if it's what i'm hoping it to be but if if you're someone that is going through grief or have been going through grief don't it if you've been grieving for for months do it if you've been grieving for years do it i am looking to get help just to talk to someone this was in my list of things to do for 2020 since november i had gone and gone on through anxiety and what I thought was depression turned out to be anxiety, as I said in the beginning. These are things that I didn't believe that you could be going through in, in your 30s. But apparently you can. Yeah. And greatly. And griefing is... It's easier when you can do it with others and you can share stories but it's not a th it's not something you can just do in three months and done maybe you can de depending on the uh, depending on you depending on the person who you're reaching for but for her we no she always called me onisha her brother I didn't realize how much she meant to me until until I'm seeing her on that bed. Just wanting her to open her eyes. and catch me crying and fool me there's a lot to our history together and uh, that's why it's the griefing is harder and I asked myself if it took me 15 almost 15 yeah let's say 15 years to feel some kind of peace about my cousin which there are days that comes back to me and hits me in the guts with her it's i don't know how long it's gonna take but i want to be able to be powerful enough to help him 
he's my best friend. But whatever, he needed to hear me with a frustration, he was there. <laughs> and I wish there was more that I could do or say and that sense of powerlessness is what makes me cry because I can't do more and time is irrelevant now So, if you're going through grief, go through grief. We all have to. Especially for people we love. And don't be afraid to get help. I'm going to get help. And you're not weaker by asking someone to hear you out. I don't know how to end this <laughs> I'm just gonna end it by saying be kind to each other be humans and be cool se me cuidan